Welcome to a short Scottish Government statistics video looking at the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation. It is intended to provide a brief introduction to the SIND, how it's constructed and how to use the new 2012 web portal. And I wanted to start by explaining what the SIND is used for and what it is. So it's a tool for identifying places in Scotland that suffer from multiple deprivation, can inform policies and ensure that resources are targeted at the places of greatest need. There are many different aspects to deprivation and the SIND 2012 is calculated using seven different dimensions or domains which are combined to form a single index. And the domains shown here, employment, income, health, education, access to services, crime and housing. And the SIMD focuses on areas known as data zones. So across Scotland, there are a total of 6,505 data zones, which have an average of 800 people living in each of them. They're designed to group together people that are similar and households that are similar so that comparisons can be made between them. And each data zone is given a score on each of the seven domains, which are then combined to form the overall index. And the resulting scores for the overall SIMD are then ranked from 1, being the most deprived, to 6,505, being the least deprived. The smaller the rank, the more deprived the data zone. So when interpreting the SIMD rankings, there's a few important points to remember. First, the SIMD identifies areas, not individuals. So not everyone, clearly, who is, lives in a deprived area is deprived. Not all deprived people live in deprived areas. Secondly, as the SIMD provides relative ranks, we can't say too much about how more deprived one area is than another. So think about it in the same way as a race. If you see the results, you can't tell just by a list of people how much better the winner performed compared to the second place. So a data zone ranked 50 is not twice as deprived as a data zone ranked 100. But if you had the times from that race, you'd be able to identify how much better one person was than another. And again, the same goes here. Finally, the SIMD measures deprivation. It doesn't measure affluence. So for the areas at the lower end of the rankings, i.e. closer to the rank 6,505, all we can say is they're less deprived. We can't say that one area is more affluent than another, even relatively, because the indicators used in the SIMD measure specifically issues around deprivation. So how can we define the most deprived areas? So SIMD is flexible in how users can do this, though typically it's done by using cutoffs. And here there are th three different ones that I wanted to pick out. First of all, quintiles. So this splits up Scotland's data zones into five groups, each containing 20% of Scotland's data zones. Or deciles that then go more granular into splitting um, into 10 groups, each containing 10% of data zones. And finally, the gentiles. So this is 20 groups, each containing 5% of Scotland's data zones. Moving on, one thing that you shouldn't do with the SIMD is to average or aggregate data zones ranks to get a rank for a larger area. But instead, if you're interested in local authorities, one thing that you can do is look at how many data zones there are in that area that fall into the most deprived categories. So this is called the national share. So let's look at an example of Inverclyde that might help demonstrate this. So in Inverclyde, we've got 50 data zones that are the 20% most deprived, but there are 1,301 data zones across the whole of Scotland. So that gives a national share of 3.8%. Inverclyde's 50 divided by Scotland's 1,301. The other way of looking at this is the local share. And this particularly measures how much of the local authority as a whole follows into the most deprived group. So again, for Inverclyde, you've got 110 data zones in the Inverclyde overall. 50 of them are in the most deprived 20% parts of Scotland. So its local share is 45%. 50 in the most 20 deprived 20% divided by 110 in total. Then I wanted to focus on changes over time. The end SIMD was published in 2004 for the first time, with updates in 2006, 2009, and this time in 2012. And although it's possible to look at changes over time, it's important to bear in mind there are several reasons why a data zone's rank might change. Yeah, it might be because the area has actually improved or worsened, but at the same time, it might also 
because other areas have improved or worsened more so and therefore the position of a data zone has changed relatively for example if, if data zone a may stay the same but if data zone b improves it could push data zone a down the rankings without a, an actual change in data zone a so let's move on to actually the look of the site and this time you can see the home page here for the simd site i just wanted to take you through the different parts of of the site so in the middle at the top this is the headline results section key findings are presented for Scotland overall, and it gives the overall picture for the SIMD, it gives the summaries for the seven domains, and to help understand the circumstances of people living in the most deprived parts of Scotland. And the top right is the local authority summary, so there's one for each local authority in Scotland, bringing together the results of the SIMD in 2012, summarising the key findings using charts, maps and commentary. In the middle left, there's technical notes, and those are used for people that want to understand actually some of the detail about exactly how the SIMD is put together. Right in the middle, the original data that we used to construct the SIMD is available for, to download. Like I say, it's a very flexible and powerful resource, and this is where to go for the detailed data. On the bottom left, provide a number of guidance papers outlining the SIMD and how it can be used, some case studies, worked examples of that. And at the bottom middle, is something around how I actually get hold of data for my area using mapping on the Scottish Neighbour Statistics site. So when you go into this you can search by postcode, data zone, place type and quickly find results. So for example here typing in EH4 4BY brings up a map for West Pelton in Edinburgh and it shows clearly here from the, um, the key that it's in the 5% most deprived parts of Scotland. So below that, though, is showing not only is it in the 5% most deprived parts of Scotland this time, but the same was true in previous uh, times as well. And then that's the overall SIMD. Looking at the domain ranks, it says, OK, while the area overall is in the 5% most deprived, i.e. the first for Gentile, that's not true for all the different domains here. So employment's in the second for Gentile, housing the fourth, and geographical access is ranked much less deprived. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a feel for what the SIMD is, how to access it, and some of the results. If you need further help, questions, comments, please get in touch by emailing neighbourhood.statistics at scotland.gsi.gov.uk. Thank you.